Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed religious leaders, allow me at the beginning of my message to thank the Parliament of World Religions for bringing us together and for giving me the opportunity to address this esteemed and enlightened audience. Under the theme, opening our hearts to the world, compassion in action, we virtually gather today to celebrate the enduring spirit and work of religious leaders and spiritual communities from across the globe striving toward a peaceful, just, and sustainable world. I strongly believe that religious leaders have an active role in converting challenges of our contemporary world and the COVID-19 pandemic is just as an example. For those who still doubt the important role and possible contribution of religious leaders on the local, national, and the global levels, I tell them to just look at the, the active role in responding to COVID-19. Religious leaders of all faiths have moved much of their pastoral work online and continue to provide guidance and solace to those who suffer. Faith-based organizations and communities have been at the front lines mitigating the pandemic's impact and providing support and guidance as well as taking action to ensure that there is adequate social provisions for vulnerable groups. Ladies and gentlemen, I chose to open my remarks and message with a brief reference to what CAICID stands for and what it does on the ground. CAICID has been and committed, CAICID has been and is committed to promoting dialogue and collaboration between policymakers and religious leaders as it is the heart of its mandate. Our unique governance structure of both religious leaders and policymakers provides us an unprecedented capacity to act as a bridge between religious and political spheres. This is what we have been doing for the past 10 years and will continue to do. CACID has advanced the agenda and called for a closer and more intensive engagement between policymakers and religious actors by implementing hundreds of activities focusing on, the, on uh, one main message. Policymakers and religious actors need to work together to address the many challenges our societies face. Since our establishment in 2012, we have translated our mandate into a concrete sustain, sustained interfaith platforms in Nigeria, Central African Republic, the Arab region, and Myanmar. In Europe, the center established the first platform between Muslim and Jewish leaders to enhance the cooperation and collaboration on common issues faced by both communities across Europe. Through CAICID's fellowship programs, we have trained 450 youth from across the globe in professional approaches to dialogue and peaceful coexistence and common citizenship. It is these types of initiatives that touches the life of people in the ground and give hope for people that they too in their own capacity can change and bring change to their communities. We are here today to find new ways for religious and spiritual leaders to join forces, to propose new partnerships that promote dialogue in order to respond to global challenges. That's a huge task. No single organization can carry the burden of these problems and the claim to solely have a solution to them. Borrowing from terms used in the posted letter announcing the 2021 Parliament theme, I affirm that yes, we need to combine our expertise to jointly convert these viruses that faces us all. Our joint work is the antidote to the viruses that threaten our shared humanity and our common vision 
and aspiration for peaceful development free from fear. And our bet is on the youth of today, the future leaders of our world who are more creative, more risk takers, more resilient, and more technology savvy than any generation before them. They have shown us how social media can ignite social change and how modern technology can be used for a better purpose for mankind. We are entering one of the most uncertain periods of our modern age. But I do believe that, that we need a greater dialogue, even as it becomes harder to, to do. We need to cross sectoral cooperation between governments, the UN, religious communities, and civil societies. We need to act to ensure that an entire generation of young people do not lose the opportunity they deserve. The consequences of getting it wrong will be immense. Thank you for your attention.